Hey guys, it's the Crafting Cow, also known as at Minecraft Builder on TikTok and Instagram, and today I'm going to be doing my first ever tutorial. So, I got a whole bunch of requests for a tutorial to do my pixel art cat house, so I figured I'd show you guys how I make my pixel art houses in general so you can build your own. I've made four of these in the past. My most recent was a cat house, and before that I had my Bart Simpson house, and then I had a Pikachu house. I'm not looking to make a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make the build I'm making in this video, but rather give you the suggestions on how you can build your very own pixel art house. These houses look great on maps and they're relatively easy to build. The ability to choose your own pixel art lets you use a lot of creativity. So jumping right into it, step one, pick your land. Choose where you want to build your house. Try to find flat land like this. Mine had a body of water on it, so I'm covering it up right now. Step two, choose your pixel art. There's a few ways you can go about this step. I've already done it for myself, but you could find the pixel art on Google or you could make your own pixel art or you could trace a drawing or picture that you like with like a pixel art app. I use Dotable, which I will put a link to in the description if you're interested in that app. So there's a bunch of other apps and softwares that do that, but that's the one I personally use. The goal of getting this app is to get pixel art with some sort of grid lines. You don't necessarily need grid lines, but grid lines are nice. As for sizing, I like to keep my pixel art somewhere around 30 pixels by 30 pixels. Something to keep in mind while picking out your pixel art is that Minecraft only has certain blocks, so make sure you have the colors that you want in your build. Me personally, I had to shift the color scheme of my cat drastically because I forgot to anticipate for the kinds of blocks that Minecraft has. A black outline on your pixel art makes building it easier, but it's not necessary. I'll get more into that later. Another preference of mine in building pixel art houses is doing something colorful. The more colors in the pixel art, the more colors you can easily incorporate in your building. Colors are crucial because the big con to these houses is that there is zero natural light coming in. If you really like natural light in your builds, you could hypothetically build a house with stained glass, but then you miss out on shitting your pixel art and the like. The house I'm gonna do today is a dog. I did a cat and a lot of people were saying, now I gotta do a dog. So here is my dog. He's 23 pixels wide and 36 pixels tall. So I violated my 30 by 30 rule, but I think he's still a pretty nice size. You can see he's got a black outline and he's got some nice colors. I added a green background to clearly see his edges and here he is with the grid to help me better count out blocks. My computer has the pixel art pulled up so I can see what I'm working on while I'm building the pixel art. Another thing I wanna add is while I'm making my ground flat by filling up this body of water, you might have to clear land or get rid of grasses and flowers which are annoying to build on. My little piece of advice is if you quickly wanna get rid of flowers, dump a bucket of water on the field so you don't have to individually remove them. Now on to step three. For the main blocks of my pixel art builds, I like to use concrete. So I have a black border on this build. I'm gonna start by making just the very rim of the build using this black concrete. Now I emphasize very rim because just because a block is part of the outline, it doesn't mean it's on the edge of the build. It's important for the space you'll have down below because the blocks on the rim are going to be the walls of your build. To start, I just pick a spot on the land that's cleared. And if it ends up that your build doesn't fit where you think it would, you can just clear out more land. It's really no big deal. Then I just pick a spot on my outline I want to start on and start counting out the blocks until I finish the outline. If you don't have a black outline on your build, start using your colors now, but still follow the same steps. Lay out just the very rim of your build. For my Pikachu house, I built the pixel art before I cleared out and decorated the house. That made it very confusing to build and dig out. For my Bart house, I dug out the ground, but I finished the pixel art before I decorated the inside, which meant I was working in the dark. For my cat house, I built all of the black blocks, not just the rim first, which made digging out the ground difficult. Learning from those mistakes, this is the best way to build a pixel art house. First, lay down the outermost edge, then step four, dig out all the ground inside that rim down three blocks, but we're gonna dig out a bit more later. If you complete your pixel art by going around the edge in one direction, if everything lines up, then you've counted your blocks correctly. Again, three blocks down, and once you get there, then the bottom will be what your hypothetical floor is, and the walls will be what your hypothetical walls are, but there's still some things you need to change. An easy way to make your pixel art house look more interesting inside is to add levels to your floor. Now that you can see about what your house is gonna look like, think of where you wanna put things. If you want a nether portal, for instance, you're gonna need to make it deep enough that you can fit one. I like to put three levels in my houses. A level by the door that's three blocks deep, a second level that's four blocks deep, and one more that's five blocks deep. Put your levels where you see fit and change them later if they don't end up working with your build. When you're considering your levels, I said the top level usually goes by a door. Now, for a door, choosing where your door goes, it's important. I usually make a little staircase down, nothing fancy because you don't want to distract your eyes on the map, but if you'd prefer, you can always just make a ladder with a trap door over it. Some other great things about these builds is while you're digging out the ground, you'll probably find some coal and maybe some iron. Also, if you ever need more space, you can dig lower and make a basement. After all that digging, step five, placing the door. I'm gonna put mine on my dog's back, not anywhere flashy like his head or on his chest because subtlety is key for these staircases. That's a pretty quick step, but the next step, step six, is putting in the walls, which takes a while. 
When making my walls, I always love having a pop of color in these houses. I loved how my Bart house looked with those blue walls, so I decided to do a bright red to match my dog's bandana. As yellow is the main color of the pixel art, I don't want to do yellow walls, because having a mostly yellow ceiling with a yellow wall would look like way too much yellow. So I'm instead choosing to do the accent color in the pixel art red. An important note in making your walls is to add texture. I have an Instagram post with tips for adding texture that I'll link to in the description, and I think it's very important for making your build look interesting. So instead of just using red concrete to make these walls, I'm using red wool and red concrete powder as well. Some colors look great using terracotta colors as well, but I try to keep your blocks limited to three for texturing. There's this one wide little cranny over here that I'm just gonna fill in. Working with little nooks is part of the fun and challenging parts of these builds, but for the ideas I've got, I'm just gonna take this one out. There is creative solutions to weird shapes though. In my cat house, the tail made a very narrow diagonal hallway that I ended up using as a hidden-ish nether portal room entrance. Now onto step seven, building the floor. I'm gonna start at the staircase. I use wood for my floors, but you don't necessarily have to. I saw a comment on my TikTok about making one of the insides of these houses modern. You have room for creativity, and I really want to encourage you guys to make these builds your own. I would, however, encourage using a block for your floor that has slabs or staircases to make the transitions between your levels smoother. To texture my oak wood, I'm going to use stripped logs, switching if they run vertically or horizontally. I'm now onto step 8, decorating the house. This is by far the longest step. Most of my decorations come from trial and error, figuring out what looks good along the way. In decorating, even in creative, I tend to incorporate things that are necessary in survival builds. Enchanting tables, potion brewing stands, storage, and beds are the ones I include in nearly every build. Nether portals, farms, and maps are also fun additions I like to do as well. I always start with my enchanting table because it needs a really big area usually. Sometimes I'll put my enchanting table on the floor, but an above ground one works great here. Around this enchanting table, I'm tempted to make symmetrical shelved storage spaces, but direct symmetry looks unrealistic, so instead I'm making them look similar but adding variation with a crafting table, a flower pot, and a skull. Make sure you leave enough space in your shelving for your chests to open. Armor stands look great with redstone lamps underneath for light, and pillager banners are great decorations. As for armor on armor stands, dye it. Mess with the colors in the pixel art and add iron or plain leather too because those work with anything. Anywhere you can, add clutter. Sea pickles, skulls, filled item frames, flower pots, and lanterns all work great. Speaking of lanterns, however beneficial working in daylight is, it's easy to forget to plan for light sources. Try to keep them in mind while you're building. If something looks repetitive or boring at all, try to spice it up with buttons, signs, trapdoors, ladders, or item frames. Because this is a dog-themed house, I'm adding some nice dogs sitting on beds that are made of dyed leather helmets on armor stands two blocks down. I also love using build-related banners, like you can see in the back. I'll just search around on Google until I find a pattern tutorial I like. I'll show you exactly how I made this one later. Now I'm onto the bed. Since my walls are red, I chose yellow for the bed. I did a tutorial on how I do the headboard and pillows on my Instagram and my TikTok. I decided to add some roses, extend the headboard, and put some more banners in. I always like insetting my potion brewing station into the wall. There's a lot you can do with putting things into the wall in underground builds. You have to be careful with anything that could accidentally show above ground, though. I always put lamps, sea lanterns, or glowstone underneath potion brewing stands. I make the whole station block off the ground so it's like a workplace. The decorations I use are nether wart farms, cauldrons, lecterns, and zombie head displays, which I did tutorials for on my Instagram and TikTok. I added some nether wart farm space, then some more storage. To add some light behind the nether wart farm, I put redstone lamps in the wall. For even more storage, I added some barrels in the ground by the door and some armor stands. I'm putting a furnace area in the wall and leaving the middle block open with a redstone lamp behind it and an item frame in it. Keep adding details. Try things out. Add. Rearrange. When things look boring in the floor, I add details there, too using stairs around smokers, or those barrels. I added another portal a little ways from the bed and a map wall by the enchanting table. Most of the cool parts of the house come from trial and error. Behind my nether portals, I put redstone lamps. I think they enhance the pattern. I mentioned buttons, signs, banners, and the like, but armor stands are also a great way to make your house look fuller. I use them a lot, as well as fences and fence gates. When I have big open floors, I'll add dining tables, decorating them with food and item frames, cakes, flower pots for cups, as well as other decorations sometimes. If you look at my Instagram, it's very clear that I like open plan houses, but I usually like adding some sort of division around the bed. I used a U-shape of bookshelves with some fences on top. Sideways looms look great as empty bookshelves. I decorated around this painting, then added a farm opposite the nether wart farm, using waterlogged stairs behind the dirt as a water source. I have a tutorial for that on my Instagram. I finished up some final decorations and started on the pixel art. I tried using sandstone for a more accurate dog color, but I changed it to yellow concrete with yellow terracotta for shading. I used red wool for the bandana and concrete for shading on it, pink concrete for the tongue, and white concrete for the eyes. After I finished all that, I did the lighting, putting loads of lanterns on the ceiling as well as adding some final touches. And that does it. There's my tutorial for a pixel art house. Send me what you make and I'd be more than happy to repost you guys and show you off in my next video. What should I do next? Comment below. 
Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to check the links in the description. Like and subscribe if you want more content like this or my Let's Plays. If you subscribe, I guarantee you'll find another right today.